working now? Yep. All right. So what I have is the ever popular make this a required question. Do you want the, your little cherubs, when they get to this item, can they just skip past it? It matters how your survey is designed. So I'm going to go back to your items, and I'm going to go to this one. In the short story, the lady of the tiger, how is the king characterized? I'm going to copy that, paste it here. Do we want any help text with this? So up here, you can have an overall descriptor. Down in help text, you might have something like click on each one of the links, or if there are certain students that you think you'd be able to help out. Under text, we can have multiple choice, paragraph. Paragraph is pretty much your short answer. Um, you can have a scale. So if you want Likert scale items, if you want them to rank, you know, strongly agree to strongly disagree, you can have a grid. But we're going to go with the multiple choice. And I'm going to go back and grab the selections that you guys already pulled up. I'm going to paste. I don't know why it's giving me the letter. Oh, because it's formatted. I'm going to paste. So you can't download it. You just have to do one by one. Yeah, you just add them in. Pompous. Did you guys write these for me? <laughs> They're good item writers. They did a decent job. They each wrote a couple questions and we mixed them up and reviewed them last week. So as you can see, it'll keep adding in options down below. And I can add an other selection down at the bottom. It says, let's say, you know, you want to really mess with your kids' heads and say, like, none of the above or all the above or, no, no, you no, know, no, stuff like that. that. Um, if you write for, you know, state <laughs> tests, then you want to figure out how to do that. Um, plus, if you want to have some logic built into your test, you can have it set up so that, you know, if they get this one correct or incorrect, it'll go to a different item. The logic works relatively well. Um, in my experience working with survey tools, if you want logic built into the system where, you know, you get an item correct, it moves to a different item, or, you know, a little bit of an adaptive testing, it works relatively well. It's something that you'll want to go in and test out and try out a couple times to see if it works correctly. Yes, sir? Would you have to write all the questions first before you put that in there? Okay. Yeah, we can start. Most of what we're going to do tonight is we'll, we'll play around with it a little bit and see what works and what doesn't. That's the best way to see how this tool works, and if it works for you, is to play with it. Um, there really is no other way. You want to be able to see what the best option is. So I'm going to hit, I have help text. Um, I didn't fill that out. Question type, multiple choice. Uh, I'm going to make it a required question and hit done. And then I'm going to grab one more. Where do you put the correct answer? The answer key. I'll show you. Okay. So I'm going to here add this one in. And then I'm going to make it another multiple choice. And this is going to be 0.05. Grams. This is going to be 0 0.050. And then last but not least, 5 grams. And this is required also, and hit done. So I have two items. And you can see down here at the bottom it says you can view the published form here. What we can also do is we can add more items up top. This is basically our text, paragraph text, um, all the stuff that I showed you previously. We can share it on Google Plus, obviously. Uh, we can email the form. So if I click that, it'll give me a link to come back here. Um, I can also embed this in a web page. So let's say you have a classroom blog. Let's say you have a website. Let's say you use Wikispaces. You can create an assessment here and have an embed code to send it out to that website. If you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say yeah. an embed code, that's fine. We can talk about that at a different time. Okay. If you know what I'm talking about, 
Yes, embed codes work on this, and they work relatively well. Do they know wiki spaces? I know a couple. Some people do. Some yeah. people, I mean, it, you should have a space online, a website that you use. Um, How many have wiki spaces? Yeah, I mean, there's, you should have some sort of online presence. I know that many of you don't, other than stuff that you do Do on you know Facebook, what a wiki space is? You're aware of it. Okay. Yeah, you can use Wikispaces, you could have a blog, Google Sites, there's a million ways. I'm not that familiar with Yeah, no, we can do all this stuff. That's it, We build up over time, slowly but surely. You can't eat a whale in one bite. So then we have C responses. So what I'm going to do is, here's my survey so far, and I have C, re first of all, let's take a look at what this thing would look like. So I'm going to click on this link, and it says resource unavailable. So that is a really bad way to show you mm -hmm. what this thing would look like. All right, so what did I do wrong? Save. There you go, O'Brien. Okay, so here's the survey. So it there's the nice theme. This is the survey we'll play with. Here's our two items. So I'm going to say uh, gregarious and 5.0 is the biggest one, so I'm going to use that. So this would be a link. You could send your students to this page. They'd be able to start, take the survey. It's online. It looks relatively reputable. Um, you might be able to have a little blurb up here explaining this is the survey for you know Mrs. So-and-so's class. Um, and there's nothing really... The other thing to consider is if you're sending this out to like parents or students or colleagues, there's nothing really questionable with what you're sending them. Okay, there's no ads or banners for like Russian brides or anything else. Um, <laughs> you know, it says powered by Google Docs, report abuse, not for you physically or mentally, but you know, mm -hmm. abuse of the product, terms of service and additional terms. You should also understand that if you send your students to this, um, the terms of service usually for Google and most other online tools is 13 years of age. Okay, you should be able to have your students go on and use the tool and use it as a survey tool. You want to check with your building and the acceptable use policy to make sure that your building is okay with you using online surveys. Okay, so check your building's acceptable use policy or the AUP and see if you're allowed to do that. Um, if they have no idea what you're talking about, then you want to dig a little bit more. If you're not sure if that's the right answer or not, come see me. Okay, and we'll talk. No. You can set this up. I believe you can set it up so that, um, you know, you can, they can only take it if they have the link, or you can set it up so it's public and anybody can take it. Um, many of us think that if we put something online, then all, all, all of a sudden, like, everybody in the world is going to come rushing in and put, like, spam and everything on it. Usually doesn't happen. If you have a, a survey up here, you'll be able to see what is reputable and what's not. Um, but this is one of the ways that your students will be able to view the survey, okay? What we can also do, I mean, that's fun, but I mean, that's not what this class is all about. Here's the cool part. So here's the survey. I can also be, um, I can click uh, share. That's not what I wanted. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to see responses and go to spreadsheet. So this is the, it's almost like a two sides of a quarter. This is the other side of my survey. So here, this is where I built it. Here's what the survey looks like on the outside. But here's the nuts and bolts of the survey. So what I can do is, if I go in and I said gregarious and I said submit, your response has been recorded. Submit another response, and you can set this up in the settings to change it. I'm going to say semi-barbaric, and then I'm going to submit another one, and I'm going to say pompous, and submit. And then if I want to, I can create my own form. So I can go back in here and have my data. Well, that's pretty cool. Can it track who, who entered that data? Like each yeah, student? I think it'll have I think there's a way for us to track IP addresses on this. 
Um, so to give you a timestamp, what I would do is I would build into this, um, have the students sign in and maybe give a name or give like an ID number or something like that. Right. But those are, the, the trick with this is, um, questions before we go dig a little bit deeper. Couple things you want to know about it, okay? Um, so here, here's what we've covered so far. I'm going to go through it one more time and show you how to actually build one. Um, but a couple things that we'll want to know. Um, number one, the the best way to learn how to do this is just to play with it. Play with it. Build a couple surveys. See what works. See what doesn't work. It's a good tool. It's not the best tool for everything under the sun, and there are very few tools out there that will do that. Uh, so you want to play with it and see what will work. Number two, I noticed that uh, some of our items had multimodal content. We had either images or video. We had different factors that we wanted to include in our, in our items. This doesn't do it that well. Okay, You can't, as you saw, you can't just plug it in and say, I want this image. Um, there is, for those of you that know HTML editing, there is a way for you to mess with like HTML code and have images pop up in it, but it doesn't work perfectly. Okay, I've done it before, but there's some mention online about how some browsers work and some browsers do not. If all of that sounds like some other language to you, don't worry about it. Okay, find a different way to develop it. There's ways ways around it. Basically, the one of the beauties of this is that you can create your own affordances for the tool. Um, and then the last thing is you get the data right away and you can have access to the data. Once it's in spreadsheet, once it's in Google spreadsheet, I can go in here and hit file and download this as an Excel file, as comma separated. So once the data is in here, I can download the data and have access to it and then use it in Excel, use it in SPSS, use it in whatever analysis or you know analytical tool I want to. So real quickly, I'm going to look at how what I actually did. So I'm going to close all this out, and then I will create one very quick, and then I will let you create a couple while I'm here. And could you show them a couple of the other item types? Yep. Besides multiple. So we're going to hit Create, and I'm going to hit Form, and I'm going to call this uh, Test Drive 2. And so I'm going to say question type, I want a multiple choice. No, I don't want multiple choice. I'm going to choose a scale. And I'm going to say how well, um, I'm going to say how excited are you to see, I'm going to spell it wrong, Prometheus. Wow. Nice. I thought I would totally mess that up. All right, so labels, I'm going to say, uh, so I have a scale from 1 to 5, and this is going to be required, and <laughs> 1 is going to be very, how's it go? Is 1 the worst? or you're low. Yeah, do, I hate it or not. Yeah, so. could care less. Yeah. And then um, I'm going to say rock on Ridley. <laughs> and if you don't know what that means, then okay. that's your problem. Um, <laughs> So I'm on. A, I'm going to go to the next one, and this second one will be. Um, we're going to do a checkbox, and it will be. Uh, what did you eat for dinner tonight? Why can't I type? Because you're being watched. Uh, I'm going to say pizza. Popcorn, um, margarita, <laughs> and uh, balance bar, and then nothing again. <laughs> and this will be another item. So we'll add another one and we'll say That's one asking a paragraph text. Yes, sir. Yep, of course. So the last one we'll do is um, please reflect on your progress so far in class. That'll be interesting. <laughs> um, 
and we'll say, please be honest. Uh, really honest. And then we're going to have it be the paragraph text. In my experience with this, you can have um, a text piece, and the text is a little bit shorter. Very rarely do I ever use text, uh, just the one word or a couple words, because it seems like kids usually fill it up. And I've done this with adults as well. It's a lot easier to go with paragraph text. Um, and the only thing is, um, when it comes up, if you ask somebody to like submit some sort of comment or leave an answer here in this, if you put text, it leaves like a little block. But then if you put paragraph text, it leaves a little bit bigger of a block. And psychologically, I feel like people will leave a little bit more if they think there's a bigger block for them to fill out. Um, so it's just, you're going to get their text no matter what. It's not going to cut you off. So I'm going to hit make this required and hit done. I'm going to fill out a different theme. Let's see. Binary blue goes with the Prometheus piece. All right. So I'm going to hit saved. Um, 